Right, so it's MIP2, Rob Rosa. This is the abdominal examination. So the first thing you want to do is you've got to get your patient in the right position. Now, for the abdominal examination, it should be flat. Now, I've got you here at about whatever, but you're going to stay like this just because it's a little bit more comfortable for you. So, first things first, curtain goes back, you've got to introduce yourself. Hello, Rob, my name's Rob. I'm one of the doctors here. Do you mind if I examine you today? No. Okay. Take a step back at this point. So you take a step back to here, and this is your general examination. So what you're trying to do is just say a few points of what, what's happening. So does he look comfortable at rest? Does he look pink? Does he look well perfused? Does he look relaxed? Have a look at what his breathing pattern is like. He looks comfortable. He's nasally breathing with his mouth closed. So he's not showing any signs of distress anywhere. It's quite important in an abdominal examination. If somebody's got clinical ascites, that you can get something called respiratory embarrassment, and that's where there's so much fluid inside there that it's actually compressing the rib cage and the lungs, and so he ends up being a little bit short of breath, a little bit like a pregnant woman would have. So you've introduced yourself, you've made sure your patient is comfortable. Now Rob's got his top on, but that's only for the purpose of this, but in examination the patient will already be undressed for you. Straight away, move up to the hands. Please may I take your hands. Just listen to the commands that I'm using. They've got to be clear and they've got to be concise. Look at both hands. You're looking at the fingernails. We're looking for koilinikia, which is a sign of iron deficiency in him. It's quite important in an abdominal examination that you look for this because it might be an indication that there's small bowel GI bleeds, something of that, of that nature. You could also make a comment about whether there is leukinikia on there as well. Take a look at both hands and do your usual technique where you're looking for clubbing. Rob, can I just get you to put two fingers together like that? And you're looking for that diamond shape between the two sides. So where you can see, if there's clubbing, then obviously both nails would be like this and you wouldn't be able to see that. Next thing, you want to look for your exaggerated longitudinal curvature, where the nail will go, obviously, quite elongated over there. Final thing, is you just want to check for a boggy swelling. Next, moving on quite swiftly, make a comment if there's any spider neva on the hands. Roll the hands over. Comment again about your negative signs, so if there's a Jupitron's contracture, which obviously is thickening of the palmar sheath, where the tendons get pulled, and also make the comments about palmar erythema. Now at this stage, you then get the patient to put both hands out in front of you and cock your wrists back. And what you're looking for here is a, a hepatic encephalopathic flap, and the hand will flap at two to four hertz is what the frequency is, but if you just see if the hand will flap, Next, I think it's always worthwhile for a general examination that you just check the pulse, check it for no more than 15 seconds, rate, rhythm, characters, nothing more than a quick systemic inquiry. Again, as you're moving up the arm now, look for tattoos, look for track marks, look for IV drug abusing lines. Next, you're moving all the way up, you naturally come up to the top of the eyes. Look then for icterus, that's jaundice of the eyeballs. Place a hand on top of the head, use your thumb, you just pull the eyelid down. If you just say to the patient, just look over to the left, hand underneath, just pull the lid down. It's a lot more comfortable than going towards someone with a finger it looks like you're going to jab them in the eye. So it's a nice, clear command. Just going to put a hand top of the head, pull the eyelid down, look over to the left. At the same time, you can look at subconjunctival uh, pallor, which again is a sign of iron deficiency in anger. Moving down to the lips, you can make the comment about the angular stomatitis, which is a sign of iron deficiency anemia. Two conditions, remember, I told you about. Hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Used to be known by the old clinical syndrome of Osler-Weber-Rendu syndrome. And pertz jaeger's disease. Both of these have got bowel pathology which can bleed, which can then lead to iron deficiency anemia. So if you want to look flash, you can ask about those. Next, open up the mouth. Look inside the mouth again for signs of those telangiectasia. Next, you're moving down nice and gently now. You're moving straight down to the neck. Look particularly on the left side because you're looking for a Virchow's node. And your Virchow's node is where your lymphatic system then drains into the left subclavian vein. If it's present, it can be a sign of GI lymphoma, so it's worth noting that one. Next, moving down onto the chest line. In a guy, you can always look at making sure there's no sign of gynecomastia. Mix straight down onto the abdomen. Now, I've taken quite a slow progress for that but when you do it in real time, it's an awful lot slicker. Next thing, you want to get down onto your knees. You want to make sure that the patient is comfortable, and for the purpose of the examination, you look in the patient's eyes so that you know if you're causing them any pain. You just pop your arm down by yourself. 
So first things first, we're going to do a superficial palpation check. Now when you're palpating the abdomen, you don't use little spiders across, you've got to keep your hand fixed and you flex like that. So you're remembering your quadrants on here, so we're going right iliac fossa, suprapubic, left iliac fossa, left loin or left lumbar, left hypochondrium, epigastrium, right hypochondrium, right lumbar and finally the umbilicus. So it's a nice clear pattern from start all the way around to finish. So you're looking at the patient's face, hand on top, this is superficial, this is looking to make sure your patient's in no distress and it'll give you some idea if there's any organomegaly there. So you're just moving it down, moving it across, nice and swift, but still at this stage fairly gentle. If there's any guarding, rebound tenderness, you'll feel it. Next, we're doing deep palpation. This is the one where you specifically look at hepatomegaly, which is going to come down to the right iliac fossa, or splenomegaly, which is going to start at the left hypochondrium, and it's going to work its way down. So we start 